Hello everyone and welcome back for a new strategy video. Today we are making the second video for newcomers. As I said, I will go through um, the basics of the game and as mentioned in the previous video, you may recognize the strategist workshop which I will be using for this video. So we'll just start with understanding how the boards work, what are the pieces and what's the goal. So we have a 10 by 10 board, similar to chess with all the squares. The only difference is that we have two legs in the middle and the first rule we must remember is that no piece can go in this lake. So if this region, and now color it, this region is my field, okay, delimited here, and this region is your opponent field, okay, you only have three ways to reach your opponent field. You have the left option, you have the middle option, and you have the right option, okay, but you can't go on the lakes. That's the first thing to remember. I apologize just for my uh, drawing skills. Uh, I've never been very good at it at school, so I hope it will be easy for you to follow. Okay, now we have a lot of pieces, right? And we will start with the first one, um, which is the, um, the flag. So the flag is uh, the, uh, the piece you want to capture, so let's suppose your opponent will put it here. A flag is a piece you must protect, it's similar to the king in chess, the difference is that this piece doesn't move at all. We then have in a... Um, um, yeah, we then have the bombs. So here's. It's another piece which doesn't move, so once you have put it uh, at the beginning, you can't move it anymore, and any piece which jumps on it will die, except one piece which I will mention later, okay? So, all the other pieces will move, and they can move from one square up, down, on the right, or to the left. Well, in this case, as we have the lake, it's not possible to move to the left, but if we are on this square here, we can move up, down, on the left, or on the right. Okay, it's it's uh, not allowed to go in diagonal. We can't go here. And all the pieces except one will just be allowed to move one square up or down or left or right. Okay, so now let's start with our pieces, and I will just show you a few of them, so I will just put this all so I'm putting this this way, you will understand why very soon and then I will put them here as they have special abilities oh, I got it. okay, there we go so, as you can see, we have pieces numbered from 10 to 1. Again, if you didn't watch the previous video, I recommend to go under settings and put this uh, thing to have pieces from 10 to 1. Especially if you are American, because you are used to number 1 to S. So please make sure to speak my same language to use from 10 to 1. So the basic rule is that um, the higher number will eat the lower number, and that's why I really like this European system instead of the American system. So the number 10 is the strongest piece from a certain point of view, because it can take the number 9, the number 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So you may think, okay, so the number 10 is impossible to kill, and the number 1 is useless. Well, not. Indeed, if the number 10 decides to go on a bomb, he will die like any other piece, so make sure that when it's a, always a risk when you attack an unmoved piece, because it could be a bomb. Second, if we um, encounter the enemy marshal, so it's called the marshal, the number 10, and they both attack each other, they will be traded and both pieces will, remo will be removed from the, um, from the board. So any piece attacking the same ranked piece will be removed from the board. We'll put it back. 
Alright, and the third option is that the number 10 is attacked by the number 1. So let's imagine this scenario. The number 10... Okay, we have two. Um, swap turn, I can't... Okay, let's just move this. So the number 10 attacks the number 1, it will win, as usual. Okay, that's perfectly fine. But now, if we imagine that we have the number 1, and the number 1 attacks the number 10, then it's the number 1 who wins. That's something you must remember. The number 1 will win only if he is attacking. If he is attacked, he will lose 100% of the time, except if he is attacked by the opponent's spy, in that case, pieces will be traded. Right. And, of course, the number 1 wins only if he attacks the number 10. If the number 1 is attacking any other piece except the opponent's spy, or opponent number 1, he will be losing. Okay, so his ability only um, is linked with the number 10. Right, then the other pieces don't have any special uh, ability, they just follow the numbers. I've put these three pieces in blue because they have special ability. Well, we already saw number one special ability. Now we have the number two and the number three. So um, let's see the number three. You can see he has an element. And um, the reason why he has it is because it's the only piece when he jumps on a bomb, he is able to remove it. So let's say we have um, a three here and a blue bomb here. Okay, the number three can simply remove the bomb. Well, if we had a bomb like here and an all, any other piece here, a piece jumping on a bomb will simply die and the bomb will stay. So the number three is low in rank, yes, but is the only one able to remove the bomb. So it's always extremely useful to keep them, especially for endgame, when you have a better understanding of where the bombs, your opponent's bombs, might be. Finally, we have the number two. As you can see, he has his hands doing this because he's showing the direction. It's called a scout, and it's similar to a tower for chess because it will simply be able to move on more squares. So let's put a scout here. He can be moving all the path he wants, just straight on. Again, no pieces, never goes in diagonal. So he can go here, and then he can go back um, to another direction. Anything he wants. A scout can't cross the lakes, right? So, again, we, can, we can't do this, right? We can do this, we can do that, but we can't go on the lake. Right. I think that's almost everything for um, the basic rules. So our goal um, will be to um, capture our opponent flag. So just to get you used to, um, as I said, this is your field. And at the beginning of a game, you will be putting the pieces as you want. And the pieces are unknown, your opponent pieces are known to you. So when you are about to attack, you don't know the power of peace, and you may lose one of your pieces when you attack. On the other hand, you will then know your opponent's piece, so you will be down material, as we say, so we'll, you will be down in some pieces, but you will be up in knowledge. And this is a sort of balance we have to find when we play a game between knowledge on the one hand and um, knowledge and uh, material on the other hand. Right, and these two are competing, and there is not always one which is stronger than the other. It's just an equilibrium you have to find. Some players like to be early uh, material up, some like to be knowledge up because they like to attack later on, but th this involves good memory. These are all things we will be working on during the next tutorials. Now, you know all the pieces uh, skills, you need to prepare your setup. So the setup is uh, the pieces disposition you have at the beginning of the game. To do this, you can go on the main page, you have the setup editor. Here you can see all our pieces. In this case, we have uh, 40 pieces var variant. So we have the flag, we have six bombs, we have one number 10, one number nine, two number eight, three number seven, four number six, four number five, four number four, five number three, 
8 number 2 and 1 number 1. As a newcomer, it's really important for you to remember how many of each piece you have. Sometimes I find people say, okay, I lost the number 7, doesn't matter. Well, now you only have 2 left, right? If you lose the number 2, well, you still have 7 left. So it's quite different. So please make sure to in a sort of way study, remember how many pieces of each type you have. And that's extremely important, especially when you will be looking at the graveyard once you are playing. So now, we can just drag and drop the pieces as we want. So let's say we want to put bomb here, we want to put something like this, something like this. Um, why do I do this? It's called a tripod. This is a, a very common way to protect your flag because in this way, as no pieces can go on the um, diagonal, you're forcing your opponent to use a miner to get your flag. Uh, so I will just make it random. Um, okay, I just fill the board. Okay, that's just putting things randomly. That's not that bad, I agree. And um, this will be our disposition. We can then decide to save the setup. We can name it. So let's say test, and we save it. I will not do it. And then you can select the setup, and you have all. Uh, special setups you can use. As you can see, I have a lot of different setups um, loaded. You sh shouldn't have so many when you start. It's just that um, I have setups for specific situations, specific players, some specific styles, specific tournaments. Uh, I will go back at it later in uh, future videos. And then you have the options to rename, delete setups. You can also download the recent, so that's the latest one you have been using in your game, export or import the setup. Save. Now, let's suppose uh, we have our pieces. So we have decided to start here. Oh, sorry. Right. And our opponent pieces look like this. So we don't know which one it is. So now we are moving. Let's say he moves, we move and he can decide to attack, right? So let's suppose his was a number 5, okay. Well, he, lo he will attack my number 8, he doesn't know it, and he will lose the number 5, but my number 8 is known. So now let's say that I want to move, and he moves down, and now I'm in trouble. Shall I attack? Because he knows now it's number 8, except if he, if he already forgot it, why not? Um, it may be a bluff, or it may be a strong piece. So let's say we want to risk and we attack, let's say it was a number 10. Okay, so it's number 10. Why doesn't it work? Okay, there we go. And we lose it, so now we lost our number 8, we know he's number 10, but furthermore he can attack and it takes the number 6 and the number 8. We just took a number 5, but we still have the information that this is the number 10. So this is why uh, Stratego is a bit a mix of chess, for the strategic aspect, and poker, because you have, to, you have the bluff and you have the knowledge. You have a um, bunch of things to think about. I think this is it for the setup. You can find a more complete video about setups with more uh, tips and instructions. Um, I think that's it. Um, yeah, so as I said, the goal is to be the first one to reach your opponent flag. Um, the other way to win is if you capture all your opponent's pieces, or at least all the opponent pieces which move. So let's say that now, um, for whatever reason, we have this number 6 here. So he moves up, we come here. And so let's say that uh, we have a flag here, which has two bombs, so that's what we call a corner flag. Again, two bombs, very common because it forces you to come with a minor. So now this guy only has one choice, right? He, he will move here because if he goes up or right, he will die to the marshal for sure. So he has to go here. He can't move anything anymore, so we go down, we follow, he go down, follow, and now he's forced to do this, and we take the last piece. And now he doesn't have the red uh, player, doesn't have anything that moves anymore, 
and therefore as we still have one moving piece even if we can't capture the flag we as blue are winning and this will be, would be the same if let's say that we had uh, this structure with a piece for example of number four blocked as yes there is a piece which could move but actually it can't move because it's blocked so that's why i usually recommend not to block pieces uh, among bombs because it can always be useful to have one more piece moving and escaping to get a draw for example in some situation of course it might be a good bluff to bomb in a piece actually um right i think this is it um the last thing i want you to remember is the name of the pieces so out of remembering uh how many um how many pieces of each type we have you need to remember the name it's not that much important when you play online I agree. it's nice when you're reading about some comments and it's extremely important when you play live because you have to mention the name of the pieces when you are attacking so as I, as I mentioned we have the flag and the bombs that's quite easy to remember then have the spy which is the number one we, 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 I, as a reminder the one when attacking the number 10, he wins. When the 10 attacks the number 1, then it's the number 10 who wins. We then have 8 number 2. These two are called the scouts. Right, remember the hand is watching straight on, moves more squares. We then have these 5 guys which have an helmet. They are called miners because they can remove the bombs. In some languages, I think it's in German, uh, the bomb is actually called a mine. So the miners remove the mine. We then have these four, number four, these are the surgeons. With these four, number five, they are called lieutenants. These four, number six, are called captains. These three, number seven, are called major. These two, number eight, are called colonels. And then we have the number nine, is called the general and the number 10 is called the marshal. If you are um, into army, you will see that they follow the army hierarchy, so you can uh, remember more easily with, is, with it. Uh, at some level, uh, people just use abbreviations, so the marshal is the marsh, the general is the gen, the colonel is the col or the colo, the major doesn't really have an abbreviation, people still call it major, sometimes you have mage, um, the captain is the cat, the lieutenant is the youth, the sergeant is the surge, and then you have minor and scout, don't have abbreviation, same for the spy. So I will try to give all the time the full name, uh, but um, yeah, I'm too much used to use this abbreviation, especially for marshal or colonel, you like to say col, so it's pretty much fast. Right, so please, this video concludes the second video for newcomers, make sure to watch the first one if you haven't, so you are used to the platform and you are used to the basics of uh, Stratego. Thank you very much for watching, we will now uh, proceed with the first tutorial video, and I hope it will be useful for beginners. Thank you so much and see you soon for the next video.